What is up YouTube and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Kubernetes monitoring, so the cluster monitoring using Prometheus. So in a previous video we covered Prometheus operator and managing multiple Prometheus on Kubernetes, which is kind of the key to understand before going ahead with this video. I also um, made a video on infrastructure monitoring, so how to monitor the Linux machines that make up the infrastructure of your Kubernetes cluster. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how to use Prometheus and the Prometheus operator to monitor the cluster components that make up Kubernetes. So how to monitor containers, pods, deployments, services, ingresses, and so forth. And there are some key components to understand, like the Kubernetes API server, the kubelet, as well as kubestate metric server. So without further ado, let's go. So in this video, we're going to be using the Prometheus operator to create and manage Prometheus instances and then use a service monitor to monitor our infrastructure. So if you're not aware of the Prometheus operator or service monitors, check out the card on the top right corner as well as a link below. I've done a video on the Prometheus operator explaining what it is and what service monitors are. And I've also um, left uh, source code on GitHub so you can follow along. So if you head over to the Docker development YouTube series um, GitHub repo, there's a Prometheus monitoring folder. You expand that, you can monitor .NET, Go, um, Node.js and Python apps. There's also a Kubernetes folder that we're going to be looking at. And as of um, the time of this video, I used Kubernetes version 1.14.8. So um, if you're using a newer version or older version, you might have to make slight ad adjustments for compatibility. Now in this video, um, I I'm going to use the Prometheus operator. So that's the first thing we're going to deploy. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a namespace called monitoring. And when that namespace is created, what I wanna do is I wanna apply the Prometheus um, operator into that folder. So I'm going to apply this entire folder called the Prometheus operator. This is everything we need, very basic. There's a deployment, there's cluster role, role bindings, a service account, as well as a service monitor to scrape itself and a service to expose it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say kubectl in the monitoring namespace, get pods, and we can see we have an operator running. Now, in order to start, we're going to need a Prometheus instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a Prometheus instance as well. And this is the cluster monitoring folder. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is apply the um, cluster monitoring folder and let's expand it. So we can see similarly to the operator, it has role bindings, it has a service as well as a service account. And what we're interested in is the Prometheus.yaml. So the operator makes it really easy for us to deploy Prometheus. So we don't have to do a deployment, an ingress, a config map, a secret, like pod specs and all of that. We just deploy this one thing called Prometheus. We um, give it a name. So, and we give it a service account and then we tell it what service monitors it needs to monitor. So this is the important thing I covered in my um, Prometheus operator video is how does how do we configure Prometheus to scrape and look for endpoints to scrape? So that is the service monitor that we're going to be using um, in this video. So I say service monitor selector and say, look for any service monitor that has the key K8S app and the value um, and these three values are what we're interested in. I've also made a, a video which I'll link down below, which is how to monitor your Kubernetes infrastructure. So the Linux machines using Node Exporter. So I use the same Prometheus instance to scrape Node Exporter in this instance here. But for this video, we're gonna be taking a look at these three components. Now, when you're dealing with cluster monitoring on Kubernetes, it's important to understand that the node exporter is kind of an isolated um, component. It has its own GitHub repo. Um, you can deploy it separately. It's not very coupled to the Kubernetes version that you're running because it's, it's pretty much just a pure Linux exporter that exposes metrics. That's why I did a separate video covering the node exporter. So you can look at your infrastructure from a Linux perspective rather from a, like a Kubernetes perspective. If you want to monitor the cluster itself, you're going to need these three components scraped. Now, a lot of dashboards, external um, monitoring software, New Relic, 
Datadog, Sumo Logic, and all these like cloud um, provider so based software requires you to scrape all three of these. You'll find that some of their dashboards will not be working if you're if you're not scraping the kubelet or you're you're not scraping cube state metrics so what i like to do is normally couple these three things together and when i take a look at um, kubectl get pods we can see we have the operator the op and we use the operator to create a prometheus instance so now we have a prometheus instance running and it's going to go and scrape these three objects now what i want to show you guys is um, if we go to that prometheus pod and we do port forward on it to port 1990 we can actually get a UI, um, web UI connected. If you head over to the status and targets page, you can see that we have nothing. We have no um, configuration here set up. Although we are telling um, Prometheus that we wanna scrape all these things, um, it's basically just telling Prometheus to look out for service monitors. So we actually go, need to go and firstly deploy cube state metrics, and then that'll include its service monitor. Then we also have to include a service monitor for the API server, as well as a service monitor for the kubelet. So let's firstly set up a service monitor for the API server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say kubectl get service um, namespace default, and you'll see the, the Kubernetes API service is right there. So what we need to do is I created another YAML file in the cluster monitoring called API server dot service monitor. And you can see that we just drop this guy into that folder. It's gonna live in the default namespace. It's gonna look for the default namespace for a um, Kubernetes service. And it's gonna look for the HTTPS endpoint of that service. So it's just gonna go and scrape um, the API server. It's also gonna look for these labels. If we describe this, this um, Kubernetes service, we'll see the component API server label on it. So, if you're if you're finding that you're not picking up the right um you're not able to connect your service monitor to prometheus and it's not coming up in this page over here you need to make sure your service monitor is actually selecting that service properly so what i'm going to go ahead and do now is i'm going to go apply that service monitor um, in the monitoring namespace and that will hook it up so in order for for prometheus to pick up that config what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete that pod so i say kubectl get pods um, then I grab the name of the Prometheus pod and then I do a delete pods on that one. And that will go ahead and create a new Prometheus instance and reload its configuration. And then what we're gonna do is get the pods again to make sure it's up and running. And we just do a port forward. Once we port forward it to Prometheus and we go back to that targets URL, we'll see the Cube API server up and running. So now we can see um, the targets up. We can also go back to the home page and we should be able to start searching for the metric so you want to make sure you can search for the metric and that it pops up then you know everything is all good you're scraping the api server now we can move on to the kubelet now similarly to the api server there's another service that exposes the kubelet and it's located in the cube system namespace if we run that, we will see kubelet service right there. So what I've done is I created a kubelet service monitor as well. And you can have a look at the definition here. We basically just tell it to look in the cube system namespace and then look for these labels and then also look for an endpoint called HTTP metrics and also HTTPS metrics. So there's like a C advisor endpoint that it, it's going to go and scrape to get metrics. And then what we do is we say kubectl apply in the monitoring namespace and we apply our kubelet service monitor. Now, as Prometheus starts up, you may find that some of these components will be in an unknown state. It just takes a little while for all these components to wake up. So you might want to hit the refresh button and just wait a couple couple of seconds or a minute or so just for everything to be uh, picked up and once prometheus scrapes all of them they should all become green and when i refresh it finally just waiting a minute or so um, everything came up and i have my kubelet up and running i also have my cube api server up and running one of the pitfalls and things you've got to remember here is that the version of everything across the cluster is very, very important. So it's important to have this YAML files and things saved to GitHub or your source control so that when you're doing cluster upgrades, you make sure that you look after the state of these metrics as well. You might have to upgrade and tweak all of these components as you go along. So what I recommend is keep an eye on the 
CoreOS Cube Prometheus repository where you'll go into the uh, manifests folder and everything I described is pretty much in detail in these um, YAML files. You can see as an example here, here's the kubelet one. So is the kubelet service monitor um, as well as like the cube scheduler, the cube controller manager. Um, there's a core DNS as well, as well as here's the API server. If I go into that one, you can see this is how you monitor the, the API server. Um, so everything is is kind of is here. I use this as a reference. I also use the Helm chart as a reference, but then I like to keep everything in Git. Um, you know, so that's kind of the state of my monitoring. So if I upgrade my cluster, it's not going to impact my monitoring. And if I upgrade my monitoring, it's not going to impact my cluster. I like to keep all these definitions like infrastructure as code in my Git repository. <laughs> And now the last piece of the puzzle is the cube state metrics. If you head over to this um, folder, you'll see it's very, very self-explanatory. There's a deployment in there deploying the latest Docker image. Um, there's also like cluster role bindings and roles, a service account for those roles and role bindings. And then we use that service account on the deployment and a service monitor to scrape itself and then a um, service to expose the metrics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl apply in the monitoring namespace and I'm going to deploy um, cube state metrics. And now when I do kubectl um, get pods, we can see our cube state metrics is up and running. And basically, if you go to the service monitor, this is the um, bit basically that tells Prometheus um, to come and scrape us. So we created a service monitor um, and we give it a job label and we technically just need our K8 app. KHS app cube state metrics. So this this bit here, the label on the service monitor will tell Prometheus to come and use this service monitor. And then the selector on here will go and find the service that exposes cube state metrics. So all we need to do is apply this and we can again just go and delete our um, Prometheus pod and I'll go ahead and port forward back to it. So if I head back to the Prometheus page after rebooting it, um, you can see we have now everything up and running for cluster monitoring. We have the Kubernetes API server. This will give us telemetry that the API server knows. So things about deployments, pods, services, ingress, and so forth. The cube state metrics is the metrics of all the like pod infrastructure. So it'll give us like CPU usage, memory usage, disk IO, and so forth. And then the kubelet's quite interesting. It exposes various states of the containers themselves. So it has a lot of container detail, you know, container network byte usage. Um, and various other interesting information which we'll look into in a second. So those are the three um, critical things, the kubelet, the API server, and cube state metrics. Once you have them scraped and configured inside Prometheus, um, the second thing, the last thing we're gonna do is um, deploy a Grafana dashboard um, and import all the dashboards into Grafana. So I have a pre-configured YAML already um, made for this one, but if you want to have a look at the Q Prometheus um, repository, you'll notice that there's dashboard definitions in here. So the community kind of keep this dashboard up to date. So as like kubelet things update, as API server or cube state metrics things update, um, they'll update the dashboard definitions. It's important to always use this to um, reflect back on. So when you're doing major upgrades, you can be sure to, you know, keep up to date with what the community is doing. So what I've done is I created a Grafana folder and I have a deployment.yaml in here where I basically define how I want Grafana deployed. And the key thing is to create all these volumes. So we're basically just creating volume mounts for config maps. So the YAML I showed you on the Prometheus, um, Q Prometheus repo is just all the JSON files is the export of the Grafana um, JSON files, which are all the data sources and dashboards represented as JSON. So we put that inside a, a config map. So if we go over to grafana.config map, you can see we're referring to all the files. So it's a config map list. We basically pick up all the um, configurations and here they are, it's quite a large file. Right, so this is all the dashboard implementation. I'll probably make a video on Grafana in a future video to go into details of how it works. Um, but I did put it all together here so that we can very easily go into um, Kubernetes and apply that. And then 
we can basically get a Grafana app up and running with all the dashboards all pre-configured. So it's all in here if you want to take a look, but also take a look at the Q Prometheus repository so that you know um, how it all fits together and how the, um, the community keeps these dashboards up to date. So what you want to do now is do kubectl get pods, grab the Grafana one, and what we're going to do is we're going to port forward to that Grafana pod on port 3000. So the first thing we're going to want to do when we land on the home page is head over to the configuration data sources. Make sure you have the Prometheus data source. If you click into it, also make sure that these settings are correct. And when you hit save and test, make sure that the data source is working. If Prometheus doesn't work, nothing will work. Then what we're going to do is head back to the home page and you can actually click this home drop down and see all the dashboards that gets imported. Now I tend to not normally use these dashboards in production. I like to pick what I need from here and then build my own dashboard. So the, the parts that I find the most useful is the Kubernetes pods. And if I go into Kubernetes pods, I look at things like memory usage, CPU usage, network IO, and then the container statuses. So one very cool thing to monitor um, using the Kubernetes API and kubestate metrics and so forth is the life cycles of your pods. You wanna make sure if you have critical workloads that your pods are always running, they, they're not in a, like a not ready state, they're not in um, like a crash loop back or image pull back off or any kind of like a misconfigured state. Um, so it's very important to monitor the, the life cycles of the pods and containers running on your cluster. The other thing I like to look at is um, the networking of the pod. So I like to look at the, the bandwidth, so current, um, the bandwidth received and transmitted. Um, you can also look at like packets, packets received, and also like errors, so if you have dropped packets. You can also monitor the Kubernetes API server. So if you're running like Kubernetes on-prem and you're deploying and bootstrapping clusters yourself, it's really important to monitor things like this. But since I mostly run um, on cloud provider network, I tend to not have to worry about the low level details too much. So I'm more focused on pods, workloads, you know, daemon sets, the whole like CPU memory network side of things so that I can make sure my my workloads are always up and running and stable. So thanks for watching guys. I know there was a long video, lots of information to share. Um, feel free to check out the links below to other monitoring guides on Kubernetes and Prometheus and also check out the source code and let me know down in the comments below what sort of things you like me to mo uh, cover in the future. And until next time, peace.